Hello and welcome to my video on the theta function. It's a single video. I don't plan to do any other videos. I just did this video because I need it for the proof of the Riemann functional equation of the zeta function. So this is why I have this video so that my proof is very very complete as far as I can do this. Okay, So let's have a look at this strange functional equation of the theta function. The theta function is a function that uh, follows this functional equation. Theta of x is equal to 1 over square root of x, theta of 1 over x. Okay, You look at it and say, wow, what the heck, why does one need this in the proof of Riemann's functional equation for the zeta function? And actually that's the point where you uh, will be led to because this kind of functional equation allows us to solve for the Riemann functional equation of the zeta function. Okay, So let's just start off and have a look at the theta function. It's a pretty simple function. It's summing over all integer numbers from minus infinity to infinity and uh, the um, factors are e to the minus pi n square x. Okay. Now this is looking strange, but actually what you are doing is you are, I'll start off in the middle, okay, you are starting for n equals 0, this is 1, then you add e to the minus pi x, then you add e to the minus pi multiplied with 4x, and so forth, all the square numbers, and actually you have to do this on the other branch of the natural numbers, the negative natural numbers, then you will have the theta function. Okay. Now there is a very important sum formula that is called the Poisson sum formula. It's a result out of Fourier series. It's pretty easy to derive so I'm leaving out the derivation even if this integral is very very strange and very very beautiful at the same time. Okay. This identity here, look at it, it just looks strange. If you have a sum over a function f of n, then this is the same as summing over a new number k, okay, and from minus infinity to infinity, this is an integral of f y, so instead of using um, n here, you use y, e to the minus 2 pi i k y dy. Well, that's a long thing, but you will actually see that it's not that that scary, okay? Now, what do we have here? The first thing that I'm doing in here is I'm just applying this to this formula. I'm using f of n as this function. Remember, our n is here the variable. Okay. So on the right-hand side, what do I get? I get e to the minus pi y square x multiplied with e to the minus 2 pi i k y dy. So this is just what we have written here. Now, we will do some other steps here, okay? Oh, because we have two exponentials, we can take them together and only have one exponential. Then what I'm doing here is, short to say, I'm just doing uh, completing the square, okay? Because like this is written, I cannot evaluate this integral. Actually, what I want to do is I want to bring this to the Gauss integral, Gauss error function actually, and then integrate. And to do that, first of all, I factor out pi x from all factors. Okay, so the first, what is left is y squared plus 2i k over x y plus i squared k squared over x squared. Now, this is not what's left, this is actually completing the square. i squared k square over x square minus i square k square over x square. Now actually if you have a look at this you see that somewhere we have 1 over x appearing here. Okay, But let's have a look further. Now as I completed the square I can complete the square actually and form the binomial formula and write this uh, three terms as y plus i k over x and squared. Here on this side, I'm just left with minus i square k square 
over x squared. Okay. Now let's look what we can do here. Okay. Now, very very awkwardly, what I'm doing is not much. I'm just separating again the integral like I did before. Not the integral, but the integrand. So here I will get minus minus because of the i squared, so this will be plus. So what I'm left with is minus pi k squared, and this x and this x squared will cancel 1x out and we get 1 over x. And now look at this. This looks like uh, the theta function uh, 1 over x, and it will turn out that this is actually the case. And here we have e to the minus pi x and this strange looking square here. Okay. Now, what I will be doing is because uh, this part is not part of the integrand actually because there is no y in it, I can just take it out like a constant number. I take out the e to the minus pi k square 1 over x. Okay. Now I'm left with that strange looking integral and that needs a little bit of analysis. Okay. I'm doing um, uh, substitution y plus i k over x will be replaced with a complex variable dz. Okay, now dy is equal to dz because uh, i k x is not actually a complex variable, but that's it what we get. So we get dy is equal to dz, and now our boundaries will become very, very strange. The minus infinity boundary will become minus infinity plus i k x. Okay, you can see that here plug in infinity you get plus ikx and here you get again plus ikx for uh, plus infinity okay so these are our new boundaries so let's write them down so we did a little substitution which did not change a lot but it gave us very very strange boundaries here okay actually what we want to derive if you remember the functional equation we want to derive that this is 1 over square root of x. Okay, If we could derive that, we would be very cool off because we would have 1 over square root of x, and this is the theta function evaluated in 1 over x, and this is the functional equation you want to find. Now, let's have a look, a further look at this right-hand side integral. This will become very, very strange. <laughs> okay, So, actually, what I want to show you guys is that this body is equal to the integral from minus r to r. Okay? So giving us boundaries from minus infinity to infinity later on. Now, how does one solve this? Actually, what I'm doing is I'm separating my path, uh, what I know about this function. So yet, yet now you will need some a little bit about um, functional analysis and complex variables. And what I'm doing here, I'm just uh, cropping off the integral into parts from minus r to r minus r plus i k x. Okay. Now then, here the second one starts at this point, goes to r plus r i k x, which is actually this in the middle is just what we have here if we go for r to infinity. This part and this part, which is the, the rest, uh, the remainder, r plus i k x to r, these are very, very disturbing for us. We want to show that these are zero. And you can do this easily by using the um, maximum length equation. So you take the absolute value of this integral and see that the length of it is pretty short. It's actually k over x. And this has some maximum value which is um, going to zero for r to uh, infinity. So this is very easy to show. Uh, the, the same arguments hold for this. And we are actually showing that this integral and this integral take the same value for r to infinity. And we can replace these boundaries by much nicer boundaries from minus infinity to infinity. Again. Okay? Now we have e to the minus pi x uh, z squared dz. So this is very important. We came from this step to here. Now, um, you know my videos on the gamma function. If you don't, have a look at them because you will need that. It's a very important 
a statement for the gamma function, which this, this case is actually called the Gauss uh, integral, which will just be equal, okay, if we call this P, then the integral is always equal to square root of pi over P, but P is pi times x. You see the pi does really cancel out, and we get this sum on the left-hand side is equal to this body, which is just, uh, so on the left-hand side we have the theta function, this is the theta function evaluated in 1 over x, and this is um, the square root of 1 over uh, square root of x, okay? So that's it, we finally proved the functional equation of the theta function. It needs a little bit of um, functional analysis, and we also need uh, needed Poisson summation formula. I don't know a uh, much more elementary way to prove that. I think there is a way to use heat equations, but um, if I know how to prove it with the heat equation, I'll do a video on that. Okay? Maybe I'll sit down and watch <laughs> how to prove that. Okay? So, um, you might ask why this video? Because we want to prove the very important functional equation of the uh, zeta function, which is uh, showing us that there is a way to write the zeta function in a very symmetric way. Okay? That concludes my lecture. If you like my videos, please subscribe. And if you have questions or anything else, please feel free to ask. Okay? That's it. So, see you guys.